again, just honored to be here and welcoming everyone from all your specific nodes on planet Earth. And this is the beauty of us coming together because we're going to be in nodes and sending this energy to the planet. So let's open up a ceremonial space for today by getting into a comfortable position and just inviting your eyes to close if you choose. And let's take a collective inhale, starting now deep through our nostrils, filling up our diaphragm, and exhale, letting out any sounds if they wish, releasing anything from the body that needs to be released. Once again, deep inhale, breathing in through the nostrils, feeling your belly rise, and exhale, letting go, relaxing your shoulders, thighs, and entire body. Deepest inhale yet through the nose, allow that belly to expand and expand and inviting a hold and letting go. Breathing at your own rhythm, inviting you to turn your palms upwards in a receiving way. And let's all begin to receive the energy of our universe now. of this alive creation. We are in an alive creation. And this alive creation is filled with the sparkles of remembrance. It's memory. And inviting you to take an inhale of all this memory of our cosmic origins, Breathing that into your cells. And exhale. Once again, breathing all this Akashic information energy into your cells, DNA. And letting go. Tuning into your heart. And we are honoring every soul here present today, all the speakers and all the individuals in attendance. We come as one unified group of humanity with an openness to learn the truth of our universe and Earth story. We open our mind and energy bodies to receive the truth and proclaim today's container, one of Akashic knowledge, cosmic knowledge of our dear relatives, the dragons. We call the dragons through all time and space in all realms that seek to serve this awakening in humanity to be here with us today to flow and interact with our energy bodies, minds, emotional bodies, and allow for us to remember and activate our true DNA potential. You are the ones you have been seeking. We are the great remembrance and we bow to the dragons and each and every one of you for being this awakening on earth with gratitude and love. We send that deep into Pachamama, Mother Earth, anchoring this deep into the planet and into Agartha. We proclaim this a multi-dimensional space of remembrance. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. And just feel that. Integrate slowly. It's going to be a lot of integration today and energy. 
and how we can integrate today is alleviating any pressure to remember any details and simply be open to feel for the great transition will occur in our bodies today. Love you, family. And I pass it back to my brother, Sir Neil. I'd like for you all to, to all take a moment here and breathe in this energy. Breathe it in. And exhale through the heart. Now envision a dimension that is stacked upon our dimension, a celestial one, in which the realm of the dragons encompass our world and are supporting us. As we embark on this historical experience today, we will call down this energy. In your mind's eye, see this dimension, the dragon realm, lower down into our realm. And as it comes down, it merges with the terrestrial sphere. We are becoming one with this dimension and stepping into the data set of awareness and information that lies in there. Letting the universe know and all beings that humanity is ready to awaken. I call in the red dragon tribe. I call in the yellow dragons, the green, the white dragon tribes, the civilizations that have been here since the beginning of time itself, before the first humanoid even incarnated into this reality, into this galaxy, the ancient ones, the personified, physical, and ethereal beings that are supporting humanity unconditionally, compassionately, without any need for recognition, but just supporting us in our process to come down to earth, to experience this shadow world, and to awaken to the truth of who we are. We call down these beings now with gratitude, sending out the signal to the universe, to all the cosmos, that we as humanity, that we as humanity, or we are ready, we are ready to wake up. We are ready to embody the truth of who we truly are, to let this serpentine energy integrate with us, to no longer look at this energy as something to be fearful from and realize it is the divine remembrance of who we truly are and our ancestry to these beings. We call down these beings now, we invoke their presence in this moment now so that we may move forward today in full awareness, in full support, and receive the activations that this gathering is designed to create for not only each an ind individual, each one of us individually, but also the collective of humanity. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Kumbandiata, oek ndia moana teana, ofani ek ndi mana tola meara na toka, iana na soa te ek na mo wate na taya, ifi na mo koa taya na mo kanai, iana na mo tia na mo kiti ni wata, ia kita kumbala o India. Oa nia karo ma te aha fona te oa ka hea mahala oa te ra oa ma kea na noa ni asa moha ia ta na o ia ka ta ruma te a o te a no. One more deep breath in, everyone. And let it go. All right, everybody, are you ready for this? Let's get into it. So today, everybody, we have some amazing presenters 
and we're going to start out with flow and then it's going to be myself going on next so a little bit about flow for those of you who have not um met flow before or experienced any of his information and awareness flow and i actually connected just over two years ago now and we've created a huge um, brotherly connection when it comes to either creating music together hip-hop music together spending time in mexico together and then also producing some really profound next level events and i'm just gonna read from flow's bio here because he's really multifaceted but also connects to multiple beings not only the dolphins and the whales but the palladians and the galactic family has really communicated through flow the first i really got into even dragon awareness uh, was only around six seven months ago but when i connected with flow a while back he had already created a course on dragons so he's had this deep connection to the dragons for quite some time and as he said yesterday in that youtube live that the dragon energy uh, for him he feels is one of the most powerful energies in the universe so not only for me but for flow i know that this is a really special day to be able to um, pay homage to these beings so flow karuna is a planetary guardian and visionary creator who has dedicated his life to spiritual awakening and the empowerment of others. His spiritual journey began with an instant awakening in a crowded downtown city street that opened it up to ethereal sensitivity and psychic powers overnight. As a messenger for the great spirit and a devoted server of Mother Earth, he has traveled the world engaging in grid work, planetary service, and working with ancient sites, honoring the ancestors before him from the earthly and universal perspective. Flo's natural ability to be plugged into the Akash has led to his creation such as the Pleiadian Oracle deck, Lyran Oracle deck, and his board game called Masters of Light, as well as his upcoming books, uh, book Mermaids of Atlantis. He's the founder of star-codes.com, an organization that's grown to a community of over 79,000 starseeds, and he's dedicated to empowering and bringing forth galactic knowledge into the collection. His down-to-earth soul seeks to loosen up spirituality while integrating higher dimensional codes into the earth realms. And I could definitely testify to that because Flo's energy is really about bringing the playfulness, not taking this stuff too seriously and bringing the joy into what we experience. And I've just had, um, just been so blessed to be connected to Flo and really to call on my brother and to have shared so much time together. And I just love you, man. Thank you so much for being you, everything you've done. And our friendship has been so, um, your our friendship has meant, the world to me you know so i just appreciate that we get an opportunity to keep creating together like this thank you dear brother it's it's a mutual uh friendship is one of the greatest elixirs of life mm -hmm. so i'm really thankful for this and yeah I'm, I'm grateful for this moment so welcome everybody and i appreciate the introduction feeling the love feeling the dragons and I'm going to be communicating today from an oracle state. So I don't really like to use the word channel. To me, I really resonate with the word oracle. Why I resonate with the word oracle is I feel in this time of sovereignty where everyone is stepping into their mastery and we are transitioning from the age of the gurus we are entering into this place where we develop our natural energetical skill set and knowing or gnosis. And I find that the oracle state is how I like to define it is the oracle state is my higher self is communicating and I'm receiving from my higher self rather than any entities coming in my field. It's like my higher self is the gatekeeper. And I find this is a very effective method for our time because your personality and essence can still flow down while you're communicating with the universe. So today is gonna to be in that Oracle state. I'm also gonna share some information I have on the dragons and we're gonna do some activation. So it's gonna be very open and I'm excited. And last tidbit, it's interesting. Neil is like, he's playful and childlike. I am. But when I feel the dragons, I become a little more fierce. So that energy is going to come down today. And let's begin. Om Sham Sham Toyana Sham Shri Oyana Yana Sham 
today we are gathering in the presence of ancient souls. Each and every one of you is this ancient essence. And each and every one of you has a connection to the dragon races and dragon lineages. And this connection we all feel to the dragon lineages is actually built in the makeup of our physical body. Within our spinal column, within our nervous system, within our unique divine biome that we all carry as humans, there is a deep genetical connection to the dragons. Our connection to the dragons is far beyond simply ethereal and past lives, which of course we have. It's also embedded in our cellular structure and DNA. And the dragons are coming forth first off to relay, we are your ancestors. We are your guardians. We are your protectors. We are elements of an ancient aspect of our universe. And our story is vast and stretches to all the dimensional fields and every planetary system. We are the dragons. And what makes us a very unique race is we thrive in every multi-dimensional level of existence. As a result, we can be found everywhere. We are the essence of creation. Creation is embedded into how we operate in all of the universe. Shu omanatam. Before we trace our journey into the Milky Way and we enter to Lyra, we first go back to Andromeda and then the Grand Central Sun. It's imperative that we understand the journey of the dragons to gain context of their opening into birthing our entire universe. Yes, we will say that the dragon energy is the birthing frequency of existence. And therefore, we are imprinted and interwoven into every aspect of this reality. How we access reality is you are experiencing this moment right now from a dimensional vantage point. But as you climb and extend your dimensional perception, you will begin to experience that reality has wormholes everywhere. Similar to how our nervous system, root system of earth stretches and intermingles in the root system or in our physical body, there is also a nervous system to the entire field of creation. And this is what we like to refer to as the collective mind. In order for you as beings here today and to get to this next level of understanding and evolution, it's imperative that we enter into this collective mind. And we want you to feel the field around you. And we want you, if you choose, to begin to feel this reality as swirling with wormholes, swirling with root systems. And these root systems are what we call quantum traveling. Shi amanatam. So we share this information because from the dimensional perspective and how we entered reality, this is how we traveled. We traveled with frequency. We travel with sound. We travel with thought. We are a very advanced collective. And this is coming from the white dragons, Shri Amanata. We are the essence of creation. And we are also found in your biome. We are found in your body. What you like to refer to as Kundalini, Shri Amanata. This is a holographic universe. 
everything is constantly copy paste copy paste copy paste and also copy and paste in all angles so essentially as all of the great masters and teachers have proclaimed that the universe is within yourself so too this is a factual statement and in order for you to connect with us from an experiential level we have to first connect to the coccyx or the base or the root of our spine. So we're inviting you to feel the root of your spine, the base of your spine. As this is a holographic representation, it's very in a line with what is occurring on your planet. And many of you, including Flo, have connected with the dragons from Middle Earth. This holographic representation is the dormant kundalini at the base of your spine. An awakened citizenry, an awakened humanity that has their kundalini flowing naturally manifests us to the surface. And this is all our collective journey at this moment. We are rising our kundalini up our body. And as the yogis and teachers have communicated through all time, when the kundalini rises up the spine, there is a great transformation of consciousness. We, from our dragon perspective, like to see the kundalini as a multi-dimensional essence that allows you to remember. Think about this for a second, that a person can be going through their day-to-day -day existence and then have a spontaneous kundalini awakening and see reality completely different. What is transpiring from an internal level is an activation to a higher multi-dimensional perspective. And this is what we are coming to you today. We want you to enter into a multi dimensional perspective the intention of this being's messages today is not only to speak about the dragons but for you to embody your dragon shiamanatha so we're inviting you to close your eyes and begin to tune into the base of your spine and root We're inviting you to see this area as an egg, maybe a dragon egg. And everyone has a different stage of where their egg is. Some have the egg hatched. Some have the egg still closed. Some, the kundalini is rising. But we seek for you to be in full transparency for yourself. And see what you see at the base of your spine with the metaphor of egg. We come from the egg and so do you. The egg is how this universe was created. There was a compression of all that is into an egg. And what some of your scientists refer to the Big Bang or Great Opening a doorway was opening where we, as dragons, were released. Our essence is the birth. We stretch the universe to infinity. Shiyamanatha. And we want this experience to occur in you by taking a deep inhale into your base now. Tightening the root muscle. And letting go. Begin again to breathe down into your base and tapping into your inner mastery to use the elements of either light, sound, or thought to give your individual egg, dragon egg, what it needs in this moment. For example, you can visualize light at the base. You can make a sound that assists with this release. 
you can project a thought. But your body is a great spaceship where your consciousness guides it. And this is the original construct of the human to co-create with their body. Shiamanata sham sham shiamanata sham sham shiamanayatam o yata sha shiamanto. As the great birthing was happening in the central core of the universe, a particular pattern and frequency was embedded into specific dimensional scales. And we like to refer to this as the elements. When you think about dragons, we hear there are many species, and a lot of speakers will talk about that. But in particular, these dragon species adhere to a particular color. These colors adhere to elemental frequency. So how you, as empowered souls, can harness the dragons is to not only feel the dragon, but connect to the corresponding element. The elements are the building blocks to this reality. The elements are what created you. Can you see the potential family of when you be begin to become a wizard, when you become a mag magician, and you know what elements you need in your life at this moment? Tune in to your sacred temple right now. See your temple as a confluence of elements and begin to tune into your mastery and ask, what element do I need now? Shiyamanato. Shiyamanato. Self-awareness is the way. Oh, shanti, oh. Shiyatam, oh, shamanatam, shanto. As you begin the self-awareness, we're inviting you to call down the element in dragon form into your essence. Shiyato, oh, shanti, oh, oh, yanatam, oh. And allow this to come from the base of your spine. Oh, sham, shi, om. Invoke the elements at the base of your spine. Shi, amanata, om. This is allowing the kundalini and fluidness to move. Oh, sham, the om, shi, And all is holographic. It frees us from Middle Earth, Agartha. And just feeling that sensation at your base. Maybe you feel a sensation or rumbling. There's no pressure to an egg. The egg has a genius. And as you connect to your inner mastery and guidance, you use a wisdom to allow this egg to open. For the egg is all powerful, but it's all sensitive all at once. It's a very paradoxical symbol in our universe. When you look at an egg from the top portion, you could push it so hard and it'll be hard to break, but the outer edges can snap easily, right? And this is the way of existence and how each and every one of us are. We are infinite in design. We are highly powerful, but we are also vulnerable and fragile. And this is the beauty of the dimension we find ourselves in. It teaches us to be humble and also masters. It teaches us to be fire and water. It teaches us to be air and earth. And the great shamanic teachers of past understood this. Humanity has had a deep connection to the dragons. Or we were here before, as Neo said, before humanity arrived. When the human was came down through the cosmic field into this planetary school, 
The dragons were here and were our guides and teachers. They were our masters. They were our guardians. We sought them for information. Why a dragon is in this mastery frequency is because the dragon has mastered the elements. When you think about a dragon, it has all the elemental success. For example, it has gills. Gills represent water. It has wings. Wings represent air. It's known to have fire. Fire represents fire. Its talents represent earth. These are beings that have consciously connected elements. And this is how you, as a sovereign soul and master, connect to your dragon. The more you harmonize the elements within, the more the dragon is birthed through you. Shi Yamanata, on your journey to evolution, as you continue to harmonize in your mastery and your elements all harmonize equally, the dragon is birthed. And this is how we create. The elements by themselves are distinguished ingredients. But when you join them together, it provides for you an ability to create. It provides for you an ability to birth. And the dragons like to refer to themselves, at least what they've told me, and it's kind of weird, but I'm going to say it. They refer to themselves as the sperm cells of our universe. There's a creation built into them. They came from the egg, the mother, but they were released as creation. Oh, so they came down into our planetary system as they're embodied everywhere. And they began to teach us in Lumeria and Atlantis. And they slowly started to, they were present, but they lose their ability for impact on the human psyche as we dimensionally lowered our frequency through the cycle. Oh, manatham. And they have great respect for humanity. So in this turning down the dial of our dimensional scale, they, quote unquote, began to vanish. But they are communicating they never vanish. In many sects, in many parts of the globe, there was a deep intrinsic connection to the dragons. We first like to go to Tibet or Shambhala. In Shambhala, which is the ancient inner earth kingdom, we still reside. And if you go to China, Tibet, and various parts of Nepal and India, our symbology is everywhere. It's in the Tibetan temples. It's in the Chinese astrological zodiac. It's embedded in the subconscious of humankind. And we want you to think about this for a second. When you study the Chinese zodiac, every animal exists, right? And that holds true also for the dragon. And this is what we are entering in 2024. The year of the dragon in February 13th. Om Anatham Sham Sham. What we hear from that is humanity entering into their mastery. So back to Tibet. We're with these teachers, we're with these lamas in the monasteries of Tibet. And there was an intrinsic connection still intact with the dragons. Why is this? Because many of these lamas and monks and Buddhist masters were obtaining what we like to call the rainbow body. The rainbow body is essentially their human entering into their multi-dimensional essence. And when you enter into your multi-dimensional essence, the dragons come in your field. Oh, sham, batam, sham, sham. So these Lamas and teachers began to call us from inner earth and Shambhala. And this is how I personally got connected with the dragons. 
I've traveled the world in this lifetime. I've been very blessed. And when I travel, I would make a habit of sitting in the, the window seat. And as I enter into a particular country or land, I pay close attention to the landscape before I arrive. And what I've observed when in a plane and monitoring the landscape is the land shows you the animals of the area. The land shows you the shapes of the animals through the rivers, through the mountains, through the canyons. And you begin to realize that you could see like the guardians of specific areas in the world. For example, I, I live in British Columbia, Canada. I'm in Mexico right now, but I live most of the time in British Columbia, Canada. And when I would fly into Vancouver, Canada and study the land, I would see the salmon embedded everywhere into the land. It's kind of like the Nazca lines of Peru, just that it's a natural phenomenon. And when you look at British Columbia, especially the West Coast, it's known for old growth trees and it has many powerful animals, but that's all possible because of the salmon. The salmon is actually responsible for the rich soil because all the animals were eating the salmon and it was entering back the soil, which led to the old growth rainforest. So the salmon is the, the founder of the lands. So I would see the salmon when I went to British Columbia. When I flew to China in 2015 and I looked out the window, what of course, what did I see? The dragons. I saw dragon energy in the rivers. I saw dragon energy in the canyons. And I knew intrinsically I was entering the land of the dragon. At this time, I had a teacher who was connected to the Yellow Dragon Order. And my journey with the dragons before that, I was seeing totem animals and, you know, I would know my totem animal. But one day I started seeing dragons everywhere. And I knew I had entered a new path, which was the path of the dragon. But I knew from a deep level, these were very powerful teachers. And my human was always in a level of respect. I was very gentle to open up into them because I just sensed they were highly powerful. In 2015, on that trip where I saw the dragons, I ended up visiting Shaolin monk temples in the Shanghai area. And I had a thought. And it's like, okay, it's time to finally invoke the dragons. You're ready. And I made an invocation in that temple. And this large gust of wind just like blew so hard that I almost got blown over. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm fully ready to connect with the dragons. The dragons historically have been known as mentioned to work with the elements. But from a shamanic standpoint, the dragons are also known to work with the weather. You may often see the shape of dragons in clouds. That's very often speaking with people. And from my experience connecting with the dragon realms is they want us to co-create with them with the weather. In ancient Mu or Lumeria, there was a co-creation between the human and the weather. Our thoughts could naturally manipulate and change the environment on our command. But the intermediary in Lumeria was the dragons. So for us to come back to a Lumerian state of consciousness and to be one we're working with the weather, we must formulate a communication with the dragons. And if you look at the historical experience and documentation of dragons throughout the world because they are documented you consistently find that the dragons were connected with agriculture and weather it is their essence because they are connected to weather i find in this universe when we as empowered souls don't use our soul gifts shadow forces will use them and i won't go too deep into this but a lot of people talk about how shadow forces are working with the weather and how we harmonize that is reclaim our original blueprint 
which is to work with the weather. And this is an ability you all have. I actually had a very powerful experience a couple of weeks ago. I am in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and a category four hurricane was coming. Fortunately for me, I was literally at the edge of the hurricane. And where I live, I could see like the entire bay. So the hurricane came in the nighttime and I was literally witnessing the hurricane from the edge. And from a more multi-dimensional standpoint, I was seeing dragons just invading our planet. That's what it looked like. They were intense. They were black dragons and they might be mislabeled from some people with a religious paradigm. But the dragons want us to understand that the elements are raw. Fire is raw. The earth is raw. And in order for us to see the truth of the dragons, we have to turn off this, this judgment filter that says this is bad and this is good. And oftentimes that bad and good, simply from an image standpoint, comes from relig religious programming. So if you go to back to Tibet, if you go to the, the monasteries of Tibet, you see, in addition to dragons, you see like these protective, powerful deities. And they're like, they look scary. They're like, like, and they stick your tongue out and they, they look fierce. And at first, when I traveled in Tibet, I may be like, what is this? And I didn't really understand, right? But as I meditated on these symbols and these deities, I realized they're protectors, they're guardians. And this is what the dragons are to all of us. They are calling for us to utilize them. And I feel like this is a more subtle aspect of this conference. It's not only for us to embody our dragon, but to begin a relationship with the dragon. And I like to work with the dragons, not only for weather, but also for societal issues. If so, we are co-creators and some aspects of this reality need to happen. And you have to check in, is this meant to happen or can I have an ability to co-create, right? The ego, on the other hand, just wants to control everything. But that's not how the masters work. We have to tune into existence and know when to enact change and when to not enact change. And that's wisdom. So when these situations, social situations are rising, I tune in and certain situations are like, use me, use me use our destructive energy. And I, during the whole COVID, CVID pandemic, and it was starting to get really intense in 20, 2021. And they're like, start to use us. I'm like, okay. So I was in central British Columbia overlooking a giant lake. And I feel like this, it was a pure freshwater lake. And it was so high frequency that I had like this connection to the dragon syrup. And I personally invoked them. I'm like, you need to, you guys need to clear this stuff. And literally in like a week or two, everything started to unravel. And this is the power of the dragons. They can assist us and liberate us at this time. We often feel hopeless many times, like seeing what's going on in the world. But to the awakened soul, we are never hopeless. We have the holographic universe within us. As we re-engineer our body, we re-engineer re existence. As we call on our allies, who are the dragons, they can assist with this planetary liberation. And we are a million percent there, and we have already won, family. We have already won. The fact this is happening, it is in process. So I ended up doing a dragon's course. And how this dragon's course happened was after that 2015 experience and that wind blew I'm like, all right, I, I ain't ready for these dudes. They're like way too intense for me. Maybe one day I'll be ready. And I found myself at a hot springs beside that lake, maybe around 40 minutes. I was at this hot springs and it's a public hot springs and they built like a, a wood tub and it's, it's very like accommodation, human built. But if you walk 20 minutes away from the hot springs, it's the actual source of the hot springs. So it's a winter day in, I believe, March, and there's still snow on the ground, and I'm walking 
through the snow and on a hike. And I eventually get to this source of the hot springs and there's steam coming from the ground. So everything's white. But when I get to this area, there's green and there's this incredible rock formation. So I could instantly feel like this is like a sacred site. It kind of looked like a mini Stonehenge and it's palpable in the field. And I was with a friend who's not as sensitive as I, and she was also like, what's going on here? This is a very sacred place. So we got to the rock formation of the hot spring source. And I put my hands to the rocks and I'm just meditating and just receiving the energy. And this clear communication comes and it's, we are the dragons and we want you to create a course to connect humanity with us. So as a Oracle, as a messenger, I get a lot of messages and oftentimes I get a message and I forget about it. So I was like, okay, interesting. And I took note of it, but it didn't really inspire my human to create a course. I'm like, okay, I just forgot about it. I, but I got so much energy from the experience that I carried out in my life. And I found myself there a week and a half later, went back to that same site, still vibrating, still high. And I put my hands there. And once again, that message came, we need you to create a dragon's course. So that second time I was like, okay, I need to, I need to go deep into this. So I opened up how I prepare for courses is I, I like to think in experience you know, everyone has their own way of thinking, but I like to think in, ex in feeling and experience. So when somebody tells me something, I actually try to like feel it. And it, it takes me a little slower, but I feel like I get on a really deep level once I feel it. And I'm just meditating on the dragons. And I don't even know where to begin, to be honest with you. And right away to begin that connection, I'm just taken down, boom, and taken down into a Gartha taken down into Middle Earth. And they're communicating, we are here in Middle Earth. We have never left. And Agartha is where many of these dragons reside. And I know this is called the Cosmic Dragons Conference, which they are cosmic, but they are here on Earth. So I started to receive their messages and they started to take me on a journey to Talos, which is a sacred sort of, city in middle earth they started to take me to shambhala they started to take me into the depths of mother earth and i started to remember that humanity has always had a connection with the dragons and many advanced souls are in middle earth right now and connected with the dragon frequency Om. Shum. so i'm just Inviting you all to feel and connect to Middle Earth, connect to Mother Earth, and begin to feel your feet or place your hands on Earth. And just inviting a communication or a connection to the dragon family on Earth. The message that Forgiveness for the past cycles and a knowing that this new human is emerging right now. We are merging, we are purging our old selves, and we are coming back to who we are in wholeness. And in these inner earth worlds, there are many civilizations. And this planet is so layered, no pun intended. It is so layered. There are beings, there are masters in our inner earth. There are Lumerians that are in our inner earth. There are Mayans who are in our inner earth and they are holding the remembrance of who we are. And I feel just in a state of honor and gratitude to these beings that hold the flame of remembrance. 
And without their frequency, we couldn't do this. Our planet would have descended into a dimensional, a very low dimensional scale that would have took a long time to emerge from. But these beings with their wisdom came down. And I connect a lot to the Palladians. And the Palladians have a deep connection with the ancient Mayans. And the Palladians communicated to me how many Mayans, especially like the timekeepers of the Mayan societies, they were aware of the invasion from the colonizers. And many of them went underground. And how they went underground is where the current cenotes, so I don't know why I did this, but where the current cenotes are. Actually, yeah, I get it now. The current cenotes are, because really those are gateways to Middle Earth that have been covered with water. And one of the most powerful ways we can all connect with the dragons is to find gateways to Mother Earth in our surroundings, in our environments, and to receive their messages. Maybe it's not the ideal moment for them to all emerge to the surface. But as our Kundalini awakens and as we collectively remember, it's imminent, family, that the dragons will rise. And this begins through us reestablishing this network. And I feel us all in our third eyes connecting with them. Om. I feel our network coming online. We are one collective network of consciousness. We are reinstilling the collective councils. We are making the collective consciousness conscious, not unconscious. And in that consciousness, all the memories and teachings of who we are, well beyond Lemuria, to the stars, exist. So may the dragons live in your DNA. May they awaken in your awareness. And may your kundalini, kundalini rise in divine timing for the sacredness of the egg. May you tend to your egg and use your wisdom to serve it. And I give gratitude today. There's so many other stories I could share, but I'm just honoring the time. And this was just a, a droplet of so much to share. And a lot of speakers are gonna connect the dots today. So thank you family for your time. I think I've hit my schedule and appreciate it. Beautiful transmission, brother. Thank you. Hmm. Perfect way to begin today. Right. And you know, you also have a Dragon's Course, right? So do you go deeper into these topics in the Dragon's Course? Yes, I have a Dragon's Course on star-codes.com and it entails so many amazing journeys to get an experiential connection to the dragons, as well as the historical context, which I feel many speakers will share today. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was Mark Twain who wrote in his diary that he went to China and people were playing with dragons. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Mark Twain, but yeah. I, I could be a different person. But I'll, I'll get back. I'll research that in the break. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. You know, um, you know, just to go into disclosure for a second, that um, when there was the hearing, the citizens hearing on disclosure before the, the official UFO hearing around 10 years ago, there was another one where ex-Congress members basically had this tribunal, if you will, and they were talking about UFOs. The Ministry of Defense from China was there. And he said to the Congress members that the Chinese government has evidence that they come from a very advanced ancient civilization of dragons. The Minister of Defense in China. Wow. They have a DNA connection. It was on YouTube, probably still is. But oh. it goes deep. I mean, this is known by governments. And it's not just a metaphysical, metaphorical term. It's quite literal 
And at the same time, as you spoke about yesterday, it's also a reflection of the inner world. Both things are as valid, right? Exactly. The and the literality. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I tend people, I sense that there's all, often people think black and white, like we control it all. But I feel the external also holographs onto us. So it's yeah. like we're constantly bouncing off each other. It's not like I control everything. Oh, I change my body. Everything's peace. It's like we're working yeah. together and everything's just more fit. Yeah, it's interesting, huh? And it's, it's even like, because I, I used to, I was taught back when I was learning astronomy as a child that the radiation of stars affects the consciousness of the planet. If a star supernova, if a star supernovas, and then all of a sudden it's no longer in space because 100,000 years ago when, the, when it supernova, now the light has stopped, that actual energy radiation affects something on the planet, right? Conventional science. But ultimately, the external world is a reflection of the inner world. And as you just said, that we then create an external reality that reflects back onto us. So it's like, um, it's the Shiva Shakti dance that's going on with creation. Yes, brother, exactly. And radiation is such an interesting topic. At least the star family have told me that's like a, it's a dimensional element. Mm -hmm. And that's why the star family protects us from atomic fusion, because it affects their reality. And they've yes. always told me that. And then I heard government officials saying, oh, the galactics are obsessed with every place that has atomic bombs. Yeah. Well, most of the sightings are at nuclear facilities, right? So fascinating. And, yeah. So thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Bye. Thank you to all the, the, the messages in the comments. I'll definitely be reading them.